Hey fam, it's Mariah, and welcome to Calvary Conversations, where we simplify God's Word to reach today's culture by casting down arguments through real, radical testimonies and biblical conversations. Now let's get started. Welcome to Calvary Conversations. We are going to continue with part two of Confessions and Repentance. But I think uh, the next point, and that's what I, I want to bring everything together. Again, we talked about confession, but now I really want to point to the repentance part. Yeah. And that is repentance by seeking reconciliation and restitution. You want to read Proverbs 14, 9 first, yeah. and I'll read uh, Luke 19, 8. Proverbs 14, 9. Fools mock at making amends for sin but goodwill is found among the upright. Amen. And so, you know, I was learning about that, just seeking reconciliation for guilt. Like if you hurt someone saying, how can I make it right? Like that's one thing I learned today was like, I didn't want to just say, I'm sorry. Like I wanted to make it right and restore the relationship with those people that I hurt mm. um, to be like, Hey, I, I acknowledge where I messed up. How can I change? And part of that was not just, Hey, I'm sorry. It was, all right, I'm sorry about that. And okay, this is the protocol I need to follow. All right, I'm going to follow that protocol next time because I really hurt people being negligent, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I, I love the, one of the best examples of seeking reconciliation, like not just confessing. I think that's why we're not having revival. Um, you know, for example, Asbury uh, revival, yeah, right? Yeah. I think there may be some good things about that. But sometimes like people are just like, oh, everybody's confessing. So I should confess. Right. But when the revival happened during Acts and during Jesus time, people weren't just confessing. Like mm. people were like confessing and then going to make things right with the people they're hurting. Right. And a great example of that is Zacchaeus. And so I'm going to read about that in Luke 19, 8. It says, but Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord. Here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Amen. And that's one thing Amen. I think is, that's why I wanted to talk about this topic is I didn't, I didn't, you know, a lot of people are thinking like, oh, confession. Yeah. Like, you know, there's a lot of different ways to confess, but I think at the end of the day, it's also saying I want to confess and then I want to seek reconciliation. I want to make things right. For example, um, you know, for me, like, sometimes people can look at me and, and say like, oh, wow, Dave is doing such a good job when mm. I'm, there's a lot of sins that I'm doing that. I, and so mm. I need to sometimes publicly uh, confess things so that yeah. people see yeah. that, you know, so when people find out how much of a wicked man that I am and need Jesus, like they're mm. not surprised, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, but seeking reconciliation for things, or if we hurt someone private, privately, like going and confessing, Hey, I'm sorry. Like, how can I like, you know, I, you know, Hey, you lost money from this. Can I help pay it back? Can I help? Mm -hmm. And I think uh, just imagine, I mean, I'll share this with you, but just imagine how different the church would be if people sought reconciliation after confession. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, I think this kind of leads into, I guess like into the verge of just like families, right? Families or even relationships mm -hmm. is that you can't just like apologize to your family and then dump them still, right? Like when you, when you want to fix something and truly reconcile, one of the things I think that makes that easy is saying, I'm not doing this for them. I'm doing it as if unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. And when I do it as if unto the Lord, the Lord is going to use me and utilize me to help me love them in the way that I need to love them in the way that I need to see them, that their sins are covered, that they have been bought by the blood just as much as I have been. Who am I, right? Who am I to, to not want to make amends or reconcile or build the relationship? Now here's something I think as counselors, we understand is that we can forgive others and truly forgive them. And we confess and we work through these things, but sometimes we can't always allow those boundaries to be crossed. Yep. For example, like I'll, I'll just use me. I was in a like domestically violent relationship 
to forgive my ex-husband, that was a miracle in and of itself. That was the Holy Spirit being able to say, Ashley, if you want this burden and you want to be healed, you need to confess this. Yeah. You need to say, I love you as a brother in Christ. I'm like, I'm sorry that this didn't work out. I didn't put blame anymore. I just saw him the way Jesus saw him. And yeah. all I saw was a broken and hurt man. Mm-hmm. And when I saw my ex-husband in that way, even though we never verbally apologized or verbally said, I forgive you, I knew that at that moment he wasn't, it wasn't a safe time to do so. But I try to reconcile. Mm-hmm. Like we try to do these steps and but sometimes it's just not possible to do that, yeah. right? Maybe someone's passed away or maybe it's just they're not there anymore and you don't know. But sometimes that reconciliation should lead you to want to fix something, not just abandon a problem and go, oh, bought by the blood, covered, right? Because what would that look like if Jesus did that to us? Like imagine, oh, David, I forgive you but mm, we're not gonna communicate anymore like your prayers uh, done like we're just not doing that right like that's that's not in god's character it's not who god is god says come unto me right every come on in like let's go yeah and i think to go with that like jesus didn't just forgive us Mm -hmm. he stretched out his arms and died for us you know and i think we need to in some ways die to self to forgive people and i think Mm -hmm. I, you, what you were saying is a great example, you know, in the, in the first Corinthians 13, it says it holds no record of wrong, mm, yeah. especially with, you know, divorce. And when people really hurt you in your life, and that's what I've learned is like people have hurt me in my life and I want to blame them or hold the, yeah. what they've done against me rather than I love one. I heard one man of God say this. He said, God suddenly changes the other person, but he always gives us opportunity to change. Yeah. And this idea that we need to look inwardly and that's where revival is. I believe revival starts when we all are willing to look inwardly instead of saying they need to change, they need to change. We say, you know what? I contributed to this. I will acknowledge what I did wrong because that's, that's the only thing I can control. And that's the only thing that I should be, you know, that I should put before God and the areas I can't control. I just, I request of God, God, can you help with this? But I think it's important that we really spend time laying down what we need to work on first, you know, and, uh, that goes along with the next point. I did want to add something else though. Mm. You were talking about trust. Yeah. And I think, um, this goes two ways. Number one, if someone has really hurt you, forgiving them doesn't mean you need to trust them again. In fact, Mm. I encourage you, if somebody has really hurt you, you should be cautious to trust them again. You know, Mm. um, like I'll use example. If someone is a, you know, their abusive husband and they beat you, um, you shouldn't just forgive them and then let them back in the house and act like everything's all right. Right. But you should forgive them and maybe, you know, work it away of saying, maybe we need to separate, you know, and, but this is the second part. And I've learned this. If you've really hurt someone, you have to understand. Uh, I once heard a pastor say, there's only one way to gain back trust. Mm. That's to do the right thing for a really, really long time. And that stuck with yeah. me because I've hurt some people in my life. And I've said things and I've done things like even with this church, I I have Mm -hmm. fallen short in this church, you know, um, just with gossip or just pride Mm -hmm. or just, you know, the ways that I've acted that haven't glorified God. And the only way to really restore those relationships with people I've hurt was to do the right thing for a long time and not to do it to get their approval again, but just to say, all right, Lord, I'm just going to do the right thing for you. Right. I want to do for you. And that goes along with the next topic we're going to talk about that. And that is continual repentance. Mm. And I think our hearts, our hearts can get hard. We got a little, little, we're limited on time. So we'll go over this one quick, but continual repentance. If you want to read Psalms 139 through uh, 23 through 24, I'll read Job 34 through 32. Yeah. So Psalms 139, 23 and 24 says, search me God and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. Amen. I'm going to pull up. Sorry. I'm like blind here. Oh, 32. <laughs> All right. And so this is uh, Job thir- uh, 34, 32. It says, 
Teach me what I cannot see. If I have done wrong, I will not do so again. Mm-hmm. And I think that summarizes that summarizes what repentance is or continual repentance is. It's like, all right, Lord, teach me what I can't see. Sometimes it hurts to see. I, it still hurts me. It's like, even recently, like the Lord showed me like, hey, you really hurt. I didn't know I had hurt so many people today. And then the Lord showed me and I was like, man. So then I had to, I sought reconciliation. And then I said, all right, Lord, help me not to do that again. Help me to do things right the next time. And I just, I pray that we would be a church that is continuing to seek the Lord's heart and saying, all right, Lord, and, and it is a slow process. Like the things, you know, I keep learning every day more things that hurt God's heart that I need to change in my life. And it's funny because I don't think I would have been ready five years ago mm. to hear these things, you know, but as I grow older in Christ, he reveals more things that as I mature and as I rely on it and as I grow in my faith, I can deal with. And I think that we need that in the church, you know, because we can get complacent. It's like, all right, I've dealt with enough things. You've made me uncomfortable enough. I'm done growing, you know, but we need to, we need to continue to let God point out things in our life that we need to deal with. So with that, um, I think we're going to, well, I don't know if you wanted to add anything before we go to the last point. Um, The only thing that really came to my mind is just like that we're constantly being renewed and, 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 revives but it's 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 done through that process of refining purification is never done right because the most purest thing that we know of is jesus right we are not jesus obviously and so when you kind of see it like that is we are these stones or these gems constantly going through this process of refinement of purification there's going to be some inconsistencies in colors of stone right but we like just like that has to be cleansed out and burned away so do we and so it's not a process to be ashamed of it's going to be a process that might hurt it might be painful because you didn't think because you thought that you were okay but god may bring things up two, three years down the line, because now you are spiritually equipped and ready to handle those things in that season. And like you were saying five years ago, these truths were really hard to hear, but now you hear them and you're like, you know what? Okay. I will walk in this and live in that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And so with that, um, you know, one of my last point is just that we are going to pray right now. And I encourage all of you to, I try to pray this every morning, but the pray for our strength, uh, strength for uh, God's people to be a repentant people and a repentant church, yeah. capital C. Because I think that a lot of churches, you know, we they're not repentant. They don't want to acknowledge where we've fallen short. We don't want to compare ourselves to the word of God and confess where we fall short and allow God to change us. So you want to read Second Chronicles 7, uh, 14? All right. Second Chronicles 7, 14 says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Amen. So with that, I'm going to end in prayer and I want to wrap up. So Amen. Lord God, we just uh, thank you so much for this topic, Lord. And just, I, I just pray Lord that again, as we're learning today, we wouldn't just be people to confess these things, God, but Lord, we would be people that confess we acknowledge our sin, and then, Lord, we, by your strength and by your grace, we work to make them right. We work to reconcile, Lord. We repent. We turn away from them. We stop doing them. And, Lord, we we learn how to act differently, to do differently, Lord, and to do what glorifies your heart, Lord. So I just pray for that. I just lift up our church, Lord. Lord, we just confess and acknowledge that our country and our church has compromised uh, just the big church, Lord, but even our church, Lord, there may be areas where we just confess that, Lord, that, Lord, we have, we have uh, compromised so much in the church, God, according to your word. We don't measure up to your word, Lord. And we just pray, Lord, that as we acknowledge that, that you would come alongside our church and just say, Lord, we are willing to be made willing, Lord. We're willing to be a church that is completely aligned with your heart and your will and the way that we live and act. And just pray that you would do that work in this church, in our country, God, 
And I pray, Lord, I, I, we trust that, Lord, as we follow you and as we repent and truly address the sins in our life that you want to deal with, God, I pray that you would help us do that. And as we do that, you would heal our land. You would first heal our churches, God, to be to bring back the beauty of marriage and, and, and the beauty of a husband and wife staying together, Lord, and the beauty of, of uh, no more divorces, God, and, and children with both parents in their lives and uh, a, a church that really loves each other but also speaks your truth, God, in this crazy world. And I pray, Lord, as we confess that, Lord, you would heal the churches and then you would heal our land. You would heal our country as you continue to help our churches to to uh, address, Lord, where we fall short, God. So, Lord, we just lift all these things up to you. I just pray also, Lord, that this, this message, Lord, and these scriptures and what we talked about today would touch the hearts of those listening. Lord, that and, and it touched my heart, Lord. I just realized, wow, God, I do not always try to make right uh, when I hurt your heart. And I pray that, Lord, we would just have a repentant heart. Lord, a heart that would acknowledge and then want to reconcile. So I just pray that for the listeners, Lord. I just pray that for uh, us, Lord, at this church, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, please, Lord, uh, Philippians 1, 6, Lord, you began a good work. We'll continue it until the day you return. Lord, please, please, we, we, we cry out to you. Continue your work in us. We want your work as much as it may hurt sometimes, God, as hard as it is to say, we trust, Lord, though, that it will bear good fruit and we will get to be a part of this beautiful will that you have for our lives and in ministering to other, others. We pray this in your mighty name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So with that, if you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you'd like to listen uh, wherever you get your podcasts, just type in Calvary Conversations. Um, you can also follow us on Instagram for our behind the scenes at Calvary Conversations. All this is also this is a listener supported podcast. So if you would like to donate to the podcast, you can do that by going to the description below and clicking donate. So thank you guys so much for listening and God bless.